Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm basically going to take you on a bit of a tour through the place in your lives where a number you are, and that is that you're either at or very close to the end or you are potentially maybe year 10, year 11, and you're thinking about whether you want to do a degree and if you want to do a degree, where do you want to do it? And you may already have seen this, but in a way, choosing a degree, well, it's a bit like choosing a car because you decide you want a car, you may decide you want a particular make or brand. People, and the people are usually advertisers, will tell you how great it is and they'll swamp you with all sorts of information. You go on the net, you get brochures. Then you get to choose the model and the extras and eventually you get to meet people like that and no, that's not my Saturday job. And this is why, in a way, choosing a university degree is very similar. Because you decide you want one, you then decide on particular institutions, so UNSW, and you choose UNSW because, as you've heard tonight, it is really a great institution that's going places. And next, you've got to choose the degree and the extras that might go along with it. Today, you've heard a number of people who've talked about science degrees and why you would want to do one. And in fact, after Fred's talk, you might think, well, why would you want to do anything but physics? But there is a bit more to science than physics. Of course, in science, there is the science. And, and that's the thing that is the hook that gets most of us in. But one of the really great reasons why you would want a science degree is that it does give you very good, flexible career options. One of the things a science degree does is it gives you a whole series of more generic transferable skills. So it doesn't just teach you how to titrate or how to do um, differential calculus or things like that. But what it does, it gives you analytical and inquiry skills that are incredibly valued by employers, not just in science, but in all sorts of other areas. And as Merlin mentioned earlier, one of the other things about science is it's a great springboard for a second degree. Basically, if you do science, Later on, if you decide to come back, you can do an MBA, um, an MCOM, or a whole range of other degrees that spring off that science that you do first off. Or, of course, you can take your science and go on and do more advanced studies. So at the undergraduate level, we have two main science degrees that are our, are our major and our biggest degrees and our most diverse ones, the Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Advanced Science. And in a number of ways, they're fairly similar, but they do have certain distinguishing features. And one of them, of course, is the ATAR. But at their heart, each of the degrees contains what we call a major. And a major is it's a coherent set of courses, or what you'd call at school subjects. And what they do is they give you a good platform, so a series of foundation courses and foundational knowledge, and then a structured series of depth courses where you can then build upon what you know. So in a chemistry major, you would do your uh, fundamental chemistry, you might do some maths or physics to underpin it, and you would then do second year and third year courses. So at the end of the degree, you could put your hand up and you could say, hey everyone, I'm a chemist and I know a bit about chemistry, or biology, or a range of other areas. It is possible to actually do double majors, so it is possible to team one area with another complementary area, and this then gives you greater breadth as well as depth. How do they compare? Well, a Bachelor of Science, three years, Bachelor of Advanced Science, four years. And the reason why Advanced Science is longer is as an integral part of that, you do a research honours year. Now, doing a Bachelor of Science doesn't mean you cut that out. You can always add the honours year on later or once you finish the first three years, but that's the fundamental difference for the length of the degree. They're both very flexible degrees, but one of the ways in which they differ is there is actually a different selection of majors. So there are different majors available in the advanced degree compared to the Bachelor of Science. And in the advanced science degree, we require, we require you to study in greater depth. One of the other things that's really good about the advanced science degree is that you have the possibility of doing research internships. And this is something that Sinead mentioned. 
that you can actually do small research projects in your usually your third year, but sometimes even your second year, and it gives you a taste of research before you get into honours. But the other great thing about research internships is they count for credit towards your degree. What are these majors? Well, they have as underpinning um, disciplines things like maths, chemistry, biology and physics. And your majors can be things that you would recognise from school. So things like physical science, which is physics or chemistry, biology, earth science, geography or maths, but a whole range of other areas as well. There's things like anatomy, ecology, biotech, material science, food science, stats, physical oceanography, the medical disciplines like pathology, microbiology, pharmacology, neuroscience, and vision science, which is allied to optometry. So there's a huge number of majors you can do, and that's not all of them. We have a couple of other degrees that are very similar to the Bachelor of Science, and one of them we're very excited about as a new degree we introduced a couple of years ago, the Bachelor of Science and Business. It's a three-year degree that ties the basic science content in with some carefully selected courses taught by our colleagues in the Australian School of Business. So we've selected some courses in accounting, economics, marketing and management. And what these courses do is that we, we believe that they will turn out scientists who are ready to go out and work in industry and have an appreciation for the way business operates and works. We also have what's called the Bachelor of Science International. And this is a, a slightly longer degree, it takes four years, but what you do in the international degree is again the same science content, but you get to do a sequence of language and con contextual courses in terms of the language. So you get to learn about Chinese culture or Indonesian culture or a range of other cultures and you get to do electives on globalisation. But the really great thing about this, again, as Sinead said, is as a part of the degree, you would spend two semesters in our partner universities overseas doing studies toward your degree. And here's a new degree that we introduced this year, the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Management. For many years, we had an environmental science degree where we would learn to study the environment. But you know, in a way, you can study the environment, and you can study it and study and study it. But unless you actually manage it properly, there won't be much to hand on to future generations. So we've developed this new degree, which has the science of the environment as at its very core. But it also has subjects or courses on economic, legal, and management areas that give a comprehensive degree in this area. You choose, as a, part of your as a part of this degree, one of a select number of majors that are tailored for this degree in the environmental area. There are more general degrees, but we also have some more specialist degrees. And one of them is the Bachelor of Advanced Mathematics. This is essentially for students who've already decided that they love their maths. And it's a broad degree. You can major in maths, 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 or maths. You can do pure maths. You can do applied maths. You can do stats. Or you can do something called quantitative risk, which is a blend between mathematical skills plus business and finance courses. And it relates to the banking and the insurance industries. In fact, as Merlin said, one of the really popular combinations with this is a Bachelor of Advanced Mathematics along with the Bachelor of Commerce. And students who do that combination are absolutely snapped up by industry. We also have a range of degrees in the bio world, so medical science, biotechnology, medicinal chemistry. The thing about medical science is there is a limited number of places for entry into medicine at the end of your second year. But if you don't take that option, it is also a great platform for graduate entry to medicine once you've finished it. Biotech, medicinal chemistry are about the biotechnology and the pharmaceutical and drug industries. We also have the nanotech degree. And the nanotech degree, it's 
essentially a cross-disciplinary degree that takes into account chemistry, maths, material science, and it's basically about looking at things on the really tiny level and doing things like building those tiny molecular scale machines. And then we have a range of professional degrees, as Merlin's mentioned, things like aviation. We can teach you how to fly a plane or how to run an airline. A Bachelor of Engineering and Material Science, Optometry, and a Bachelor of Psychology or a Bachelor of Psychological Science, which will let you hang, hang up your shingle as a psychologist. And then there are the dual degrees, as Merlin mentioned, he put up the whole list of them, where you study for two degrees at once, and the trick here is it doesn't take you as long as it would to do them individually. Now, as Merlin's mentioned, if your ATAR misses the mark, and Merlin mentioned that the UNSW ATAR sets at 80 as a minimum, we do have a series of bonus point schemes that I'm happy to explain to you later on that can apply to most of our degrees. You get up to five additional points plus access points. And coming to uni, it's a big, scary place, but especially in the Faculty of Science, we do have peer mentoring systems that help you transition from school into university. So when you come to university, we tell you more about the peer mentoring scheme and how you can enrol in that. And of course, choosing a degree it's a big step. But we also have what we call the internal program transfer scheme at university here that means that your decision doesn't need to be final. We do let you transfer between degrees. There are certain criteria you need to meet, but we do let you transfer between degrees here at UNSW. So I'm about done. Basically, I'm sure you'll have lots of questions. Talk to the experts, go online, look things up. When I was your age, if I wanted to find any information, I had to get on the phone or I had to go to libraries. Nowadays, it's all on the net or you can email. But also, in the rooms directly opposite when we wind up, there's a whole range of people from the schools who are just dying to talk to you and dying to explain to you everything about the particular disciplines and degrees. Thank you. <laughs>